Hi, I'm Don from Don Drones On. I received an invitation to present at a Transport Canada webinar as part of their Innovation Centre lecture series. Their requested topic? How can Transport Canada do drones better? Well, it's a good thing I had a time limit. Stay tuned to hear what I proposed on behalf of the Drone Pilot Association of Canada, including some practical quick wins TC should consider. The Innovation Centre group running the webinar is basically Transport Canada's R&D organization, quite separate from the RPAS task force crew we've been working with, who are focused more on the regulations and operational elements of drones. The webinar took place on October the 18th, and two other presenters were invited in addition to myself. One was Richard Borger, a professor at Mohawk College in Hamilton, who shared his experiences with SFOCs in drone research programs. The other was Jason Dudek of Sky Canoe, a fascinating cargo drone development project. He shared his fun navigating the, well, I'll call it the catch-22 problems of getting clearance to test a new drone over 25 kilograms. There were about 50 people participating in the webinar, mostly from Transport Canada. So let me run through my presentation and some of the questions and discussions that took place afterwards. I'll just cover the tips of the wave on some of these slides, so feel free to pause and read the details if you wish. I began by explaining what DPAC was, then set the tone for the recommendations by sharing this interesting Facebook post where the author, a new drone pilot, basically said the exams need a serious revamp. And this should come as no surprise to anyone who has taken the tests. So with that, I jumped right into the four key DPAC recommendations. The first one lines up nicely with our newbie comment, to re-examine the drone regulations and exams in light of what I politely called questionable underpinnings. In my opinion, the problem with the current drone regulations and exams stems from the very principles upon which they were based. They appear to be these principles, that drones should be treated the same as manned aircraft and the same for drone pilots. Secondly, that guidelines and best practices should be embedded directly into the law. And thirdly, that safety is best achieved by setting a high bar for pilot certifications. So if you can't pass the exams, certainly you won't fly and all will be well in the world. Unfortunately, these principles lead to some negative consequences. For example, we've ended up with unrealistic regulations such as cannabis use within 28 days of flying a drone, or 12 hours after drinking alcohol, way out of balance with the rules for driving a car, for example. And of course, I'm not advocating for stoned drone flying, just that the regulations should be commensurate with the risk and balanced with the rules for similar activities, like driving cars, not manned aircraft. These principles have also resulted in overly prescriptive regulations, including things like mandatory checklists and it being illegal to fly outside of your drone's temperature limits. The law should be to take into account weather during your flight, not make it a crime to fly on a typical Canadian winter day. Heaven forbid if you fly with a snowflake on your landing gear. That's against the law. And perhaps the worst consequence of these principles is the simple avoidance of the exams. Too many people are ignoring the regulations and exams entirely. Bottom line, simplify the regulations and for goodness sake, focus the exams on drone safety. Our second recommendation was that TC improve awareness of drone regulations and safe practices. The current attempts have been pretty ineffective. The drone safety website is confusing and disorganized. It needs to be streamlined. The RPAS chapter of the AIM document is absolutely excellent and getting better with each new version, but it does have the occasional error and a very long update cycle, 11 months from change cutoff to publication. And finally, videos. TC has published a few awareness videos choosing a cartoon format which isn't very appealing to most adults, and the videos have rather strange mixed messages. Here's a screenshot I showed from one. 
recommending you learn to fly in a city park, which is likely against local bylaws, is likely in controlled airspace, and as this picture shows, usually full of bystanders. So overall, pretty ineffective attempts. Instead, there has been an over-reliance on the drone community, including people like me and ground schools for awareness and training. Honestly, there should be at least the equivalent of the driver's handbook for cars or the study guides and sample exams that exist for private pilot licensing. Overall, TC should up their game and take a leadership position on awareness and training. Our third recommendation was related to technology. Compared to even just a few years ago when the current regulations were written, today's drones are much more capable and safe. It would not be a stretch to say that some larger drones, such as the Mavic 3, are actually more safe than toy drones due to sensors and obstacle avoidance and all of that. So we suggest looking into creating tiers of drone classes based upon capabilities, not just weight, and adjust the restrictions downward for more capable drones. The second comment here is crucial. I frequently hear stories from drone pilots about manned aircraft flying extremely low and coming in out of nowhere. If drones are expected to stay out of the way of manned aircraft, it's time to make it mandatory that manned aircraft, especially those flying in Class G airspace, are electronically conspicuous to drones. It's the only logical way to go. Finally, data. NAV Canada currently owns airport and airspace data and makes it very difficult to access. As a result, third-party apps, like the DJI FlySafe system, cannot be easily synchronized. And yes, this applies to my own Drone Pilot Canada app. This is nuts. The basic airspace and airport location data is public safety information and should be public. Technology can make drones even safer than they are now. Number four recommendation, engage more recreational and light commercial drone pilots in policy discussions. At least 80% of drone pilots fall into these camps, and yet TC committees and policy meetings have never included recreational or light commercial representation. It's time to change that going forward. I then went on to offer two practical suggestions, call it low hanging fruit, from the DPAC perspective. Firstly, change the basic exam structure from a test to a learning-centric safety program. The safety program idea was actually demonstrated in a meeting with TC back in September, and I did a video about that, so I don't want to spend too much time on this. What we're proposing is to replace the basic exam with an interactive web program that delivers the safety information and rules and immediately quizzes you with specific feedback very similar to the American Trust exam and the entry-level exam in the UK. Simple, effective, and a much better way to drive home the real drone safety issues compared to the current exam structure, its content, and the vague feedback mechanism. The second practical improvement suggestion is to change the huge pile of prescriptive regulations into one practical rule that can actually be followed. Something like this. The RPAS pilot must have a full situational awareness by taking appropriate measures to both prepare for and execute a safe flight. The pilot must have sufficient knowledge of the airspace and physical environment for a safe flight, take into account weather conditions, ensure the drone is in safe operating condition, maintain a clear line of sight to the area of operation, not necessarily to the actual drone, and be prepared for emergencies. Easy to understand and actually much safer than a long list of regulations that can take an hour to execute to the letter of the law for every flight. And who's doing that? So in summary, I presented four recommendations for Transport Canada plus two practical low-hanging fruit improvement suggestions. And of course, I closed by showing appreciation of the quarterly meetings that have begun between Transport Canada, NAV Canada, and DPAC's steering committee. These are fantastic. But I also said that it's great to be heard, but the proof is in the pudding. So that was the presentation. I think it went over pretty well. What do you guys think? And the Q&A session afterwards was interesting also. 
The first question was what Deepak's position was on remote ID, a touchy subject. I reiterated that I think being electronically conspicuous is a key safety point for both manned and unmanned aircraft. But I said there were privacy issues in the American implementation that I don't agree with. In my opinion, only law enforcement personnel should be able to pinpoint the location of a drone operator, for example. Another question was our perspective on the use of drones in the Ukraine war. I stated that I don't like the idea of weaponizing drones, but recognize that the situation there is dire and it is war. From a Canadian perspective, the scarier elements are the potential use of drones by terrorists and the very serious problem of drones dropping contraband into prisons. Now, I don't recall what the question was, but something that got me going on a bit of a rant was someone using the term the drone industry. Now, I realize industry is just a word, but I do not consider myself in the drone industry any more than I'm in the bicycle industry when I ride a bike. Like tens of thousands of other drone pilots in Canada, I fly for fun and occasional commercial work. I do not think of myself as being in an industry. And use of that term implies that we're all doing heavy duty cargo drones or R&D. Transport Canada must recognize that the vast majority of drone pilots, at least 80%, are not in the drone industry. And as such have a very different perspective on drone operations. I'll finish off by mentioning that there was definitely not a consensus on changing the exams. One comment was that the drone exams should not be easier at all. And another speaker mentioned that he has seen too many cases of recreational droners flying recklessly. While I respect these opinions, I think they may have misinterpreted our proposal. We're not trying to make it easier to be certified, but rather that we think the exams should be more relevant. And if they were relevant, people would actually learn safe practices as part of training for the exams, rather than dumb things like epoxia or the chemical composition of the atmosphere. Awareness of safe drone practices is key. So there we have it, a really interesting opportunity to summarize the Drone Pilot Association of Canada's perspective on the improvements that should be made by Transport Canada for droning. I'd like to thank the Transport Canada Innovation Centre for inviting me to participate in this webinar. It's great that the recreational and light commercial drone pilot perspective is finally being heard. Thanks for watching this very long video. I'd love to hear your comments.